NCLEX practice exam for respiratory system 1. Question 1. The nurse is caring for a male client with a chest tube. If the chest drainage system is accidentally disconnected, what should the nurse plan to do? A. Place the end of the chest tube in a container of sterile saline. B. Apply an occlusive dressing and notify the physician. C. Clamp the chest tube immediately. D. Secure the chest tube with tape. Answer, A. If a chest drainage system is disconnected, the nurse may place the end of the chest tube in a container of sterile saline or water to prevent air from entering the chest tube, thereby preventing negative respiratory pressure. The nurse should apply an occlusive dressing if the chest tube is pulled out, not if the system is disconnected. The nurse shouldn't clamp the chest tube because clamping increases the risk of tension pneumotrax. The nurse should tape the chest tube securely to prevent it from being disconnected, rather than taping it after it has been disconnected. Question 2. A male elderly client is admitted to an acute care facility with influenza. The nurse monitors the client closely for complications. What is the most common complication of influenza? A. Septicemia B. Pneumonia C. Meningitis D. Pulmonary edema Answer, B. Pneumonia is the most common complication of influenza. It may be either primary influenza viral pneumonia or pneumonia secondary to a bacterial infection. Other complications of influenza include myositis, exacerbation of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and Rees syndrome. Myocarditis, pericarditis, transverse myelitis, and encephalitis are rare complications of influenza. Although septicemia may arise when any infection becomes overwhelming, it rarely results from influenza. Meningitis and pulmonary edema aren't associated with influenza. Question 3. A female client has a tracheostomy but doesn't require continuous mechanical ventilation. When weaning the client from the tracheostomy tube, the nurse initially should plug the opening in the tube for a. 15 to 60 seconds b. 5 to 20 minutes c. 30 to 40 minutes d. 45 to 60 minutes Answer, B. Initially, the nurse should plug the opening in the tracheostomy tube for 5 to 20 minutes, and then gradually lengthen this interval according to the client's respiratory status. A client who doesn't require continuous mechanical ventilation already is breathing without assistance, at least for short periods, therefore, plugging the opening of the tube for only 15 to 60 seconds wouldn't be long enough to reveal the client's true tolerance to the procedure. Plugging the opening for more than 20 minutes would increase the risk of acute respiratory distress because the client requires an adjustment period to start breathing normally. Question 5. 
a male client with Guillain-Barr syndrome develops respiratory acidosis as a result of reduced alveolar ventilation. Which combination of arterial blood gas ABG values confirms respiratory acidosis? A. pH, 5.0, PACO 230 mm Hg. B. pH, 7.40, PACO 235 mm Hg. C. pH, 7.35, PACO 240 mm Hg. D. pH, 7.25, PACO 250 mm Hg. Answer, B. Initially, the nurse should plug the opening in the tracheostomy tube for 5 to 20 minutes, and then gradually lengthen this interval according to the client's respiratory status. A client who doesn't require continuous mechanical ventilation already is breathing without assistance, at least for short periods, therefore, plugging the opening of the tube for only 15 to 60 seconds wouldn't be long enough to reveal the client's true tolerance to the procedure. Plugging the opening for more than 20 minutes would increase the risk of acute respiratory distress because the client requires Answer, B. Administration of a corticosteroid such as prednisone suppresses the body's natural cortisol secretion, which may take weeks or months to normalize after drug discontinuation. Abruptly discontinuing such therapy may cause the serum cortisol level to drop low enough to trigger acute adrenocortical insufficiency. Hyperglycemia, glycosuria, GI bleeding, restlessness, and seizures are common adverse effects of corticosteroid therapy, not its sudden cessation. Question 7 A male client is admitted to the healthcare facility for treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Which nursing diagnosis is most important for this client? A. Activity intolerance related to fatigue. B. Anxiety related to actual threat to health status. C. Risk for infection related to retained secretions. D. Impaired gas exchange related to airflow obstruction. Answer, B. Initially, the nurse should plug the opening in the tracheostomy tube for 5 to 20 minutes, and then gradually lengthen this interval according to the client's respiratory status. A client who doesn't require continuous mechanical ventilation already is breathing without assistance. Answer, B. A non-rebreather mask can deliver levels of the fraction of inspired oxygen phi O2 as high as 100%. Other modes, simple mask, face tint and nasal cannula, deliver lower levels of phi O2. Question 9. A male adult client with cystic fibrosis is admitted to an acute care facility with an acute respiratory infection. Prescribed respiratory treatment includes chest physiotherapy. When should the nurse perform this procedure? A. Immediately before a meal. B. At least two hours after a meal. C. 
When bronchospasms occur. D. When secretions have mobilized. Answer, B. The nurse should perform chest physiotherapy at least two hours after a meal to reduce the risk of vomiting and aspiration. Performing it immediately before a meal may tire the client and impair the ability to eat. Percussion and vibration, components of chest physiotherapy, may worsen bronchospasms, therefore, the procedure is contraindicated in clients with bronchospasms. Secretions that have mobilized especially when suction equipment isn't available are a contraindication for postural drainage, another component of chest physiotherapy. Answer, B. Initially, the nurse should plug the opening in the tracheostomy tube for 5 to 20 minutes, and then gradually lengthen this interval according to the client's respiratory status. A client who doesn't require continuous mechanical ventilation already is breathing without assistance, at least for short periods, therefore, plugging the opening of the tube for only 15 to 60 seconds wouldn't be long enough to reveal the client's true tolerance to the procedure. Plugging the opening for more than 20 minutes would increase the risk of acute Answer, B. The nurse should perform. Answer, B. Maintaining a patent airway is the most basic and critical human need. All other interventions are important to the client's well-being but not as important as having sufficient oxygen to breathe. Question 12. For a male client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which nursing intervention would help maintain a patent airway? A. Restricting fluid intake to 1,000 milliliters slash day. B. Enforcing absolute bed rest. C. Teaching the client how to perform controlled coughing. D. Administering prescribed sedatives regularly and in large amounts. Answer, C. Controlled coughing helps maintain a patent airway by helping to mobilize and remove secretions. A moderate fluid intake usually 2 liters or more daily and moderate activity help liquefy and mobilize secretions. Bed rest and sedatives may limit the client's ability to maintain a patent airway, causing a high risk of infection from pulled secretions. Question 13. The amount of air inspired and expired with each breath is called a. Tidal volume. B. Residual volume. C. Vital capacity. D. Dead space volume. Question 12. For a male client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which nursing intervention would help maintain a patent airway? A. Restricting fluid intake to 1,000 milliliters slash day. B. Enforcing absolute bed rest. C. Teaching the client how to perform controlled coughing. D. Administering prescribed sedatives regularly and in large amounts.
Answer, C. An FO2 greater than 0.5 for as little as 16 to 24 hours can be toxic and can lead to decreased gas diffusion and surfactant activity. The ideal oxygen source is room air FiO2 0.18 to 0.21. Question 13. The amount of air inspired. Answer, C. Controlled coughing helps maintain a patent airway by helping to mobilize and remove secretions. A moderate fluid intake usually 2 liters or more daily and moderate activity help liquefy and mobilize secretions. Bed rest and sedatives may limit the client's ability to maintain a patent airway, causing a higher risk of infection from pulled secretions. Answer, B. Maintaining a patent. Question 13. The amount of air inspired and expired with each breath is called A. Tidal volume B. Residual volume C. Vital capacity D. Dead space volume Answer, B. A pH less than 7.35 is indicative of acidosis, a pH above 7.45 indicates alkalosis. Question 18. Before weaning a male client from a ventilator, which assessment parameter is most important for the nurse to review? A. Fluid intake for the last 24 hours. B. Baseline arterial blood gas ABG levels. C. Prior outcomes of weaning. D. Electrocardiogram ECG results. Answer, B. Before weaning a client from mechanical ventilation, it's most important to have baseline ABG levels. During the weaning process, ABG levels will be checked to assess how the client is tolerating the procedure. Other assessment parameters are less critical. Measuring fluid volume intake and output is always important when a client is being mechanically ventilated. Prior attempts at weaning and ECG results are documented on the client's record, and the nurse can refer to them before the weaning process begins. Question 19. Which of the following would be most appropriate for a male client with an arterial blood gas ABG of pH 7.5? PACO 226 mm Hg, O2 saturation 96%, CO324 mEC, L, and PAL 294 mm Hg. A. Administer a prescribed decongestant. B. 
B. Instruct the client to breathe into a paper bag. C. Offer the client fluids frequently. D. Administer prescribed supplemental oxygen. Question 13. The amount of air inspired and expired with each breath is called A. Tidal volume B. Residual volume C. Vital capacity D. Dead space volume Answer, B. Maintaining a patent. Answer, C. Controlled coughing helps maintain a patent airway by helping to mobilize and remove secretions. A moderate fluid intake usually 2 liters or more daily and moderate activity help liquefy and mobilize secretions. Bed rest and sedatives may limit the client's ability to maintain a patent airway, causing a higher risk of infection from pulled secretions. Question 5. A male client with Guillain-Barre syndrome develops respiratory acidosis as a result of reduced alveolar ventilation. Which combination of arterial blood gas ABG values confirms respiratory acidosis? A. pH, 5.0, PACO 230 mm Hg. B. pH, 7.40, PACO 235 mm Hg. C. pH, 7.35. Question 13. The amount of air inspired and expired with each breath is called A. Tidal volume B. Residual volume C. Vital capacity D. Dead space volume Answer, B. Maintaining a patent airway is the most basic and critical human need. All other interventions are important to the client's well-being but not as important as having sufficient oxygen to breathe. Answer, B. A positive reaction means the client has been exposed to TB, it isn't conclusive of the presence of active disease. A positive reaction consists of palpable swelling and in duration of 5 to 15 millimeters. It can be read 48 to 72 hours after the injection. In clients with positive reactions, further studies are usually done to rule out active disease. In immunosuppressed clients, a negative reaction doesn't exclude the presence of active disease. Question 23. Nurse Eve formulates a nursing diagnosis of activity intolerance related to inadequate oxygenation and dyspnea for a client with chronic bronchitis. To minimize this problem, the nurse instructs the client to avoid conditions that increase oxygen demands. Such conditions include A. Drinking more than 1,500 milliliters of fluid daily. B. Being overweight. C. Eating a high protein snack at bedtime. D. Eating more than three large meals a day.
Question 9. A male adult client with cystic fibrosis is admitted to an acute care facility with an acute respiratory infection. Prescribed respiratory treatment includes chest physiotherapy. When should the nurse perform this procedure? A. Immediately before a meal. B. At least two hours after a meal. C. Answer, B. A positive reaction. Question 23. Nurse Eve formulates a nursing diagnosis of activity intolerance related to inadequate oxygenation and dyspnea for a client with chronic bronchitis. To minimize this problem, the nurse instructs the client. Answer, B. Maintaining a patent airway is the most basic and critical human need. All other interventions are important to the client's well-being but not as important as having sufficient oxygen to breathe. Answer, B. A positive reaction means the client has been exposed to TB. It isn't conclusive of the presence of active disease. A positive reaction consists of palpable swelling and in duration of 5 to 15 millimeters. It can be read 48 to 72 hours after the injection. In clients with positive reactions, further studies are usually done to rule out active disease. In immunosuppressed clients, a negative reaction doesn't exclude the presence of active disease. Question 23. Nurse Eve formulates a nursing diagnosis of activity intolerance related to inadequate oxygenation and dyspnea for a client with chronic bronchitis. To minimize this problem, the nurse instructs the client to avoid conditions that increase oxygen demands. Such conditions include A. Drinking more than 1,500 milliliters of fluid daily. Answer, B. Maintaining a patent. Answer, B. A positive reaction means the client has been exposed to TB. It isn't conclusive of the presence of active disease. A positive reaction consists of palpable swelling and in duration of 5 to 15 millimeters. It can be read 48 to 72 hours after the injection. In clients with positive reactions, further studies are usually done to rule out active disease. In immunosuppressed clients, a negative reaction doesn't exclude the presence of active disease.
Question 23. Nurse Eve formula. Question 13. The amount of air inspired and expired with each breath is called A. Tidal volume. B. Residual volume. C. Vital capacity. D. Dead space volume. Answer, B. A positive reaction. Question 5. A male client with Guillain-Barr syndrome develops respiratory acidosis as a result of reduced alveolar ventilation. Which combination of arterial blood gas ABG values confirms respiratory acidosis? A. pH, 5.0, PACO 230 mm Hg. B. pH, 7.40. PACO 235 mm Hg. C. pH, 7.35, PACO 240 mm Hg. D. pH, 7.25, PACO 250 mm Hg. Question 23. Nurse Eve formulates a nursing diagnosis of activity intolerance related to inadequate oxygenation and dyspnea for a client with chronic bronchitis. To minimize this problem, the nurse instructs the client to avoid conditions that increase oxygen demands. Such conditions include a. Drinking more than 1,500 milliliters of fluid daily. b. Being overweight. c. Eating a high protein snack at bedtime. Question 18. Before weaning a male client from a ventilator, which assessment 